So you want to break into tech, but maybe you don't know where to start. You don't have any formal experience and you're new to the industry. As someone who has been there, I'm going to walk you through today just how I broke into tech from fashion and modeling to a complete 180 and have been in the industry now for well over five years as a software developer. And I've done one of these videos before in the past where I talk about how I broke into tech with no experience and how you can too. But I really wanted to do an updated version of this because I feel like I've been getting asked so many times this question and it's still such a relevant topic. I mean, it's not going anywhere and wanted to cover it with you today from my point of view, especially in the past year, I think I've really grown and a lot of things have changed and to share it with you, kind of give you an updated, an updated version. And we're also going to go get I'm sure you can fill it in what we are getting because it's uh, what I am constantly doing when I'm on the road, which is coffee. Okay, we got the nitro cold brew. I've been obsessed with nitro cold brew recently. It's so good and it's really quick. I don't know why. I know this is like the millennial or whatever in me, but I hate waiting for things, whether it be coffee or anything. And nitro comes like right away, which is cute. For me, I would say one of the hardest things when breaking into the industry was that I was coming in with no experience, which really meant no contacts and leaving an industry where I had so many connections. I felt like I knew so many people. It was, it was just seamless to get a job at that point to an industry where I had no network. It was terrifying. And I think one of the best things looking back that I really did was immerse myself in communities, whether it be online or in person. And as an introvert, that is definitely the hardest thing I did because I'd rather I'd rather hide behind the code than go meet people and be interacting with strangers. But honestly, it is the best thing I did because when you put yourself out there, you get into communities, get into different groups, whether once again, online or in person, it really, you'll start developing these relationships with these people. And I think at the end of the day, the key to landing your first job in tech or really any job, obviously you don't have your, you know, your years and years of experience to back you up. So it's who you are as a person, showing people that, hey, this is me, I have so much to bring to the table, I might be new in this industry, but I'm willing to learn, I want to grow. And the only way you can do that is to really show up and go to these events. So for me, for events, I, I live in Toronto, so everywhere is different. But what I did was I used meetup.com. I'm not sure if it's still active, but essentially what it is, is meetup.com. You can go there and see different meetups happening in your city. And I'm sure if there's not meetup.com, there are similar ones now. And it's a great way to get involved. And a lot of times, honestly, like I said, I didn't have any friends or connections in this industry so I'd go to the events by myself but one thing that really helped with that is when you're going to, going to a networking event everyone else is there to meet people and to network as well so you're not going to event alone and I can have to stand in a corner no everyone is there for the same reason to meet other people so that really helped alleviate some of the some of the pressure Okay, so now that we've spoken about networking and the importance of putting yourself out there and interacting with the community, what do you do next? Well, one thing I get asked all the time, or rather not asked, but told is, well, Tiff, I don't have any relevant experience. How am I going to stand out? I have experience in a different industry or I have experience from internships, but I don't have any relevant experience in the tech industry. And as someone who's been there coming from fashion into tech, I can tell you, you do have experience. It might not be, completely straightforward that you can transfer it over, but you have experience in other areas. For example, if you are in, say you have a marketing background, well, you have probably experience with communication, dealing in teams, problem solving, you know, you're marketing oftentimes you are looking towards uh, targeting a spe specific demographic, you're solving a problem. A lot of that can all apply over into tech as well. And although it doesn't directly apply, you can show examples of how you've done this in your past industry and how you can apply it into tech. This shows two things, which I think is really interesting. And as I mentioned, a lot of people kind of write it off and don't even practice this. But if you do this, if you show your previous experience in other industries, what it does is of course the obvious, which shows that, hey, you are capable, you are competent, you can do your job, you did it very well in this industry. But the other thing it does, which isn't so obvious, but it really gets recruiters and people who are hiring their minds going is it shows that you are taking initiative. It shows that you are bringing examples to the table from what you did in other industries and how you can apply them into tech. It really brings a sense of 
leadership to the table that you want to learn, that you want to grow. Here are some examples of you doing that. And I think it's a really great way to stand out because too many people just write off experience if they have none, no direct experience as no experience at all, which in reality is not the case. Okay, for our next one, I have our trusty whiteboard here because what good is a video if you don't have a whiteboard in it? Well, most of mine don't have whiteboards, but it's really fun and it makes you feel like professional. Anyways, let's, okay, let's recap of what we have spoken about so far. So the first one we spoke about was networking and building that community. The second one we spoke about, oh, this is gonna be backwards for you, isn't it? Okay, I'm gonna tell my editor right now. Can we flip the, flip it around so it's proper for you? I hope we can. If not, we'll put it up on screen. Second one we spoke about was, first networking, second is you do have experience. Okay, so networking experience, well, what comes next? Well, the third thing that I did, and once again, I think will really help you stand out from a crowd is to take action, take initiative. And no, I'm not speaking about working for free or putting in all these hours for free, but sometimes you really need to put yourself out there in the community and uh, take on an internship, take on a position that maybe you feel, you know, is it your dream position? But oftentimes, I've told this story so many times because really because it's so relevant into the tech industry. And I think a lot of people have their expectations not aligned with their reality. And when I was in a boot camp, when I was in a coding boot camp, and it was my last, last project, I was starting to job hunt. I remember there were some people who were like, well, I'm either working at a fan company or I'm gonna reject all offers. And I was like, what? What do you mean? Like, this is your first job in tech you like that's maybe it is possible but like you're coming with no experience you know let's be realistic here so i'm not saying that that isn't a possible a possibility for you or you shouldn't strive towards that if it's something that you want to strive towards but what i am saying is make sure your expectations are aligned with reality so for me my first job actually after my boot camp wasn't as a software developer it was a qa and qa is a great position i mean to grow a career in as well but i knew i wanted to become the, go the developer route. So I started as QA because I saw an opportunity there. I saw that if I start out in this position, it's a smaller tech company, I can grow into a software developer role. I can kind of start playing around with the code more and getting more familiar with it and push into that direction. So I think at the end of the day, let's call this one ego because it's really about letting go of your ego. Put an X there because no ego. You know what, before we talk about the fourth one, I need coffee, give me a second here. Okay, so I'm someone who, if I have coffee later in the day, I'm not going to be functioning, I cannot sleep, so, but it's still early, so we're good, we're good. Okay, back on track, Tiffany, the fourth one. What is the fourth one? The fourth one I want to talk about today and cut this out. What is the fourth one I'm blanking? What is the fourth one? Okay, I had a moment there. I forgot what the fourth one was. This is why I need more coffee. The fourth one is accepting failure, accepting rejection. I get asked all the time, when is the perfect time to start job hunting? When do I know I'm ready? Well, there is no perfect answer. You're never going to know when you're ready. And I'll tell you a little tip here. If you are applying for jobs, especially your first job in the tech industry, and you feel ready, it means you waited too long to apply for those jobs. I want you to feel a little bit nervous, a little bit scared when you start applying for jobs because you're on that cusp, you're on that brink of greatness where it's, you know, you know what you're doing, but you still know you have a long way to go. That's where you should be when you are applying for jobs. Don't feel hundred, wait till you feel 100% confident because A, you probably never will. And if you do feel 100% confident, you should have applied a long time ago. But I wanna also take in, in line with that, that when you are applying for jobs, you're going to hear no. You're going to hear no a lot. And it doesn't mean that you are a bad candidate or there's something wrong with you or your resume. It literally means you are competing against thousands and upon thousands upon thousands of people, often for one role. And this might be, they happen to know someone in the company or they have a friend who works there. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So if you get rejected or told no, don't automatically go to, well, it's because I suck. No, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more politics going on behind the scenes often. 
Okay friends, those are some of my top tips when applying and breaking into the tech industry. The key to anything though is just persevere, keep on persisting. Get excited when you get told no because it means you're one step closer. Truly, I know it sounds cheesy, but you're one step closer to a yes. So really focus on that and you got this. If this isn't your first tech role, maybe you're just applying for a different position. All of these, all of these tips I've shared with you today still apply. Leave down in the comments other tips and advice you have for others who are applying for their first tech role, other questions you have. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding videos. And I will you Ready to talk, baby, can be your rock, baby. Please come and sit with me or take a walk with me. I need to speak to you. Just wanna be